I'm not gonna talk about all the filthy things we did the other night. <laughs> Randall! We're part of the moonlight. I ain't a fan to say. Can't bring the sunlight. Hello, Romans. This is a room here. Welcome back to Random Brace Hollywood. We're here talking to Marcus still, and we're gonna find out what's his relationship with Randall like. He is emerging from a cocoon, struggling to free himself. Some nights, I don't know which holds more terrifying potential, Randall or his followers. Each one may be but a gentle lamp, full of kind intentions and innocent desires for safety for freedom. A person is intelligent and wise, but people so easily become a pack of animals, a hive mind, feeding off each other's fear and hatred for the enemy. That's all I can ever say. You're feeling Charisse? I've always had an unusual fondness of the Red Queen. She possesses both the kindest and cruelest heart of any vampire in the Hollywood. Her protective desires clash with visions of the utopia. But she longs to fix the broken and wounded. All she knows how to do, to, how to do is destroy. I will always admire the beauty of her vulnerable soul. Hmm. Something that happened recently, which is nothing. I think that's all for now. Very well. We'll see each other again soon, I'm sure. Right, bye boy. Maybe Marcus is shop or return to the dark streets. We're gonna head back to my room. Fuck this card. They didn't protect me and killed me. Well, they didn't kill me, but they let me die. Time had passed quickly and the night was already almost over. Time to head back. It'd been fairly it'd been a fairly quiet night, at least in contrast to my earlier adventures. Though I had a feeling the reprieve wouldn't last. When I returned to the hotel, I expected Charisse to be in the meeting room like before. Instead, the clerk at the front desk handed me a note when I walked in. Apparently, Charisse was out of town again. But before I returned to my room, I wrote a quick me memo for the clerk to give her, requesting a vampire be sent to Eloisia for her fix. Oh, okay. I settled down on my bed and pulled the note out of its pristine envelope, scanning over it. Chico, I received a call from Ms. Eloisia earlier. Excellent work. Enclosed is a token of my gratitude, expressing dead presidents. Don't spend it all in one place. I turned the envelope upside down and out fell a bundle of bills. Ooh, a bundle? A shockingly large amount of money, too. Your next task will be ready soon. Keep up the admirable performance, and one day you might end up as my right hand woman. I don't want to. I don't want to join your cause. As a final word of warning. There has been another murder. The mutilation was identical to the body you found in ske how say skewers. I think I was gonna say skewers last time as well. In the sewers, except instead of an Iscari agent, the victim was a Golgotha. Beyond tolls, Michiko, we do not know where they will strike next. I'll see you soon, Lock. Well, at least I hadn't immediately been thrown under an, uh, thrown another errand, which meant I had some time to do as I pleased. Maybe Randall will pay me a visit tomorrow, or else I could explore that invitation I got from Zang or Zong. I don't know how to pronounce the name. Sorry. The more I thought about it, the more curiosity and caution pulled me in opposite directions, like an asteroid drawn towards a planet. I felt compelled to meet him, but my dream made me wary. Whatever he was, I had a feeling he knew many, many things. What if I did join his cause but backstabbed him? Is that a way? Is that an option? <laughs> you guys can't really answer me because I'm already pre-recording this. When those less than certain thoughts circling my mind, I let sleep take me for another night. It's gonna be weird not seeing things anymore. My deathly nap was cut short by the phone nearby. I lunched, lurched, not lunched. I lurched upright and reached out for the receiver, holding it to my ear. Hmm? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> no, I would say hello. Hello? Hey! Michiko, is that you? Oh, it's Randall! Randall, this is a surprise. How did you get the hotel to connect you? Wow, I didn't think you'd be up this early in the night. Randall, this is a surprise! Sure is for both of us. I didn't think they'd let me through the room. But they're probably wiretapping this call right now, so I'm not gonna talk about all the filthy things we did the other night. <laughs> Randall! You know, Sharice probably like to hear that. Ran a lot of sudden roar of laughter that nearly deafened me and probably scared the pants off any silent eavesdroppers. Anyway, rice and shine, kid. Sorry if I woke you up. How do you feel about coming out to help me with something tonight? The chance for you to get out of that prison hotel. Of course, just say the word and I'll be there. Well, <laughs> say the word, I'll be there. That's what I like to hear. I knew I could count on you, kid. Stop calling me, kid. I could almost envision the proud grin spreading over his face. Truth is, some vampire hunters have been slipping around not far from the beach. 
they're definitely they're different guys from the photo crew earlier probably part of the group that's been harassing us for the past few weeks this song grew more serious and slightly longer hesitant pauses separated its words normally they're not a problem but they're getting smarter hunting us down individually instead of as a group getting better rifles and equipment we've had some injuries and some losses holy fuck Reno briefly went silent. When he spoke again, his voice had regained its firm confidence. So tonight, we need to scare them off as good as we can. Make sure they won't pose a problem for us anymore. Good opportunity for you to see with your own eyes what we're up against. And Queen Bitch shouldn't mind, since hunters are out to get all of us. Alright, I'm ready. Where should I meet you? Okay, I guess. Should I bring my shotgun? Wait, I don't have a shotgun. <laughs> oh wait, I kind of want that choice. Nah, I wouldn't ask you to get your hands dirty, unless you wanted to. But I'll let a gravely chuckle that rasped into my ear. Alright, meet me on the beach as soon as you can. Oh, and Michiko, maybe don't wear your nice shoes. You never know how things will end up. I don't- I have one pair of shoes though, I'm sure. After we said our goodbyes, I quickly threw on my clothes and hurried outside, wondering what, just wondering just what to expect. I was finally going to see these hunters Heath had mentioned a while back. I wondered if they were anything like the vampire hunters I'd seen in movies. I don't know. Be interested to see them, because um, these these aren't David's people, right? A short taxi ride later, I arrived at Santa Monica Beach. As I plodded through the Santa Randall's Beach House, I noticed a small group gathered outside it. There was no mistaking that eye-catching figure in the adoring crowd around him. Hi, Randall. You're so handsome. There you are, newbie. Glad you decided to turn up. When I wandered up to Randall's side, he reached out to squeeze my shoulder, letting his large palm rest there for a few moments. Hey, Michiko! Aw, oh, man, Randall, you didn't tell us we could bring a date! <laughs> what the fuck? The other room were publicly called out, apparently, in high spirits. They all looked lightly armed, a few with pistols, some with knives, maybe they preferred hand-to-hand -hand combat. Date? Who said anything about dates? I just figured Michiko here could use her ghoul skills to scare off the hunters. I wouldn't call myself particularly scary. Yes! Taxes, in-laws, erectile dysfunction. <laughs> oh my god! That's so funny. Let's do that one. On second thought, maybe not. <laughs> Good-natured laughter bubbled through the group that Randall's were pulling. <laughs> maybe it was just my imagination, but I thought a few of them of ours shifted around me a little protectively. Wait, like protecting me or like they're protecting themselves? Alright, listen up. Our scouts earlier s said they saw the hunters back in the city, not too far from the pi pier. Not Piper. <laughs> we should be fine as long as nobody gets caught out. But those fuckers seem to know exactly when we're going to show up. And a bullet to the heart isn't something you can just laugh off. When Randall addressed us with a more serious, intense gaze, the group quickly grew quiet. I can see a number of them shifting from foot to foot, fingers clenching into fists. We're going to split up and try to flank them. You guys will go on ahead and let the hunters trail, trail you through the streets while me and Michiko follow from behind. His voice was low, but so confident and determined that no one even batted an eye when he mentioned me as his partner of choice. I mean, I'm just his underling. Intern. I'm his intern. <laughs> If everything goes according to plan, we'll trap them in the alley and deal with them there. And no innocent witnesses will get in the way. We've got to put up an end to the shit tonight. So for all your plan mates sake, don't do anything stupid. Everyone got it. Yeah, let's go! Get him! Come on, let's get him! What are you guys doing though? Hell yeah, what are we waiting for? As the group quickly worked back into an eager, loud fervor. Fervor? F fervor? Rustling with excitement to turn the hunters into prey, Randall glanced down at me, his brow knitting slightly. You ready for this, newbie? I called you down because I knew you could handle it. I like to believe people are a lot stronger than they think they are. Randall, I was born ready. Let's go. I'm a little nervous, but I trust you. Maybe I should bring a weapon. I don't know. There's a lot of room for things to go wrong. Um, honestly, I think I will be a little nervous, but I trust you. Yeah, well, I hope you trust yourself too. If you don't, then you better learn soon. Oh shit, dude. Is that a bad choice? Where is this? Is it this one? Uh, Randall was born ready. Let's go. Man, I sure love that spirit of yours. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Don't even know why I bother worrying about you. Oh, that was a cuter choice. Alright, everyone. Let's show these cocksuckers that you don't fuck with my bar. Jeez. Oh my god, it screams. Holy fuck. And with the last rallying cry, we left the beach for the Santa Monica streets. Randall and I stayed behind, letting the rest of the group go ahead. We could track their scents afterwards. 
After a few minutes had passed, we began to cautiously follow them. At Randall's request, I kept a careful watch for anyone on the street who looked suspicious. Of course, considering all the unusual types out at 1 a.m. in Santa Monica, it was not a particularly easy task. Yeah, everyone's a fucking weirdo at this point, right? <laughs> when we rounded a corner, Randall suddenly teased, oh, teased, not, not teased, tensed behind me, his eyes narrowing to slits. Curious, I followed his gaze to the other side of the street, where a quiet, oddly dressed group was briskly walking along. Walking bombs for a second, I saw fuses on their heads. There they are. I keep walking, don't lose sight of them. He muttered softly, his eyes full of sharp focus, like a wild animal wary of an attack. Um, what if it's just a bunch of kids going to a D&D session? No, not really, because I'm seeing that they're, 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 uh, visuals above their heads. They're probably following the others. Yeah, they're moving fast, not just loafing around. I caught a hint of worry in his little whisper. We trailed the hunters along the road, keeping enough of the distance to not attract their attention. Luckily, the streets were still flecked with people wandering around, so we weren't entirely alone. If everything was going to accor was going according to plan, Reynolds clanmates were leading us to a good ambush spot. Just then, one of the hunters glanced over his shoulder, <laughs> straight at Randall and me. Without warning, Randall suddenly reached out to grab my hand. His bandaged palm pressed against mine, and he wrapped his large, callous fingers around my own. Uh, squeeze his hand! Randall shot me a surprised look when I gently squeezed our hands together. Well, this was his idea. He couldn't blame me for making the most of it. <laughs> for a tense moment, the hunter's eyes seemed to stare right through us. He had to have guessed. We definitely looked suspicious, especially since Randall didn't exactly blend, in his, it blend into his surroundings. Well, shit. Finally, after what felt like forever, the hunter's gaze shifted to someone else on the street. The group kept walking instead of turning around to blow our brains out, which was probably a good sign. You okay? Renna let out a long release exhale by my side. Rather than releasing my hand, though, he kept his grip tight, pulling me along a little faster. So, what are we going to name the baby? <laughs> How are you going to let go of my hand now? You think he, you think he didn't figure us out? Oh no. So what are we? <laughs> Should we lighten the mood a little bit? Huh? Little bloodsucker kind of has a ring to it, don't you think? Well, we'll pull the others on it later. For now, let's keep going. <laughs> Hurrying down the street, we follow the hunters into a wide, a wide alley. Was this the ambush point? I didn't catch the scent of Randall's clanmates down the road, so they must have turned off somewhere. Maybe the Mavar took a shortcut, or else the hunters had lost them, or they're already all dead. When we were halfway down the alley, the human group disappeared around a corner. In the next second, Randall stopped dead in his tracks. Fuck. I got a real bad feeling all of a sudden. That we were walking into a trap? He paused, closing his eyes. It seemed like he was visibly straining his senses. If the smell were here, or they attacked something in the distance. Was it? What is it, boy? What the fuck? We have to keep going. We might not reach them in time. Maybe we should turn back. Oh no. We can't turn back. His people will be upset. We have to keep going though. We might fall in a trap. Oh no. It's all I can think of. Shit, Michiko, come here. Yeah? Well, the warning ran and grabbed me by my waist. What, by the waist, pulling me into a tiny opening off the alley. It fucking say nothing, obviously. Well, I was struggling, I let Randall tug me around the corner. I get a hug. Hug you. Quiet. I didn't say anything. His arms squeezed around me, pulling me closely against his chest. A few moments later... Oh shit. Down this way, quick! They followed us. I knew it. I saw them come this way. Light footsteps quickly approached us from around the corner, along with the hushed voices. I could smell humans, the hunters. They were getting closer. Oh man, we both look like very sad. Our hiding spot could barely fit one person, let alone two, but Randall clutched me tightly enough that we managed to squeeze in. He didn't breathe, and I heard no heartbeat in his chest, but every muscle in his body felt tense to its limit. Oh, that's sad. We can't hear a heartbeat. Damn it. I know they were just here. Well, where the fuck are they then? On the rooftops? No, they must be hiding. The footsteps grew closer, slow and cautious. I couldn't tell how many there were, but it sounded like more than two were heading for us. But this is where we're going to end today's episode. I know you guys are going to be real upset, but this is where we have to end the episode today. So, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.